Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Daniel, coming to you today. It's Friday, December 27, 2013, and I know. That is some pink lipstick, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, <laughs> you all, I'm coming today just to say hi. How are you? How is your week going? My week has been great. Great, great, great. I'm on vacation, for those of you who haven't been following me this week. I have vlogged pretty much every day this week, I think. Now, that wasn't my intention. I did not set off to vlog every day of my vacation, but it's a good way to record how I spend my time, what I'm doing, just my thoughts or the whatever's urgent or popular for me that day. You know what I mean? So today... Um, I woke up early, I started my day with activities, and I turned on C-SPAN. Now, I don't watch TV a lot. I usually um, save, I watch an hour on Thursday, and I watch an hour on Friday, and that's pretty much it with TV. I just don't have the time, and when I am using, like, when I am viewing something, I'm viewing things that, like, complement my studies or what I'm doing, you know, as a teacher. So, I, I mean, it's just a conscious effort. I'm not saying it's right for you, but at this time it's right for me to do that. So I was watching C-SPAN today, and I fell asleep, took a nap during C-SPAN, and then I woke up and watched a little more, and there was a panel on about, um, well, Melissa Harris-Perry was like the panel host if you will and then there were four other women who work in social work or they work with women who have been incarcerated either at some level of that process either they are incarcerated they have been released or they um, you know are trying to uh, become readjusted to living in society so I watched it. I, I, I watched it because I wanted to hear what these women had to share about their work experience. Many of, uh, well, two of them. One of them was the social worker and her experience with um, her agency that she works with to help the women. And the another one was a PhD who, but her work her life, career, her heart and soul, just like, um, you know, the first, the social worker, her heart and soul is helping women to be successful and to live whole lives and, you know. And then there were two women who were actually, uh, had been incarcerated um, and they told their stories. Now they are helping other women to build strong, healthy, whole lives. I mean, you all, it was amazing. Just, you never see, well, maybe you do, but um, black people, I, I, I know that black people and people are of color are aware, maybe poor people of all stratas, all races, are aware of the... Um, how we are perceived as a threat. We are we are perceived as a threat or as um, a criminal, even when we're not. We are ba we are judged by our background. So either your family line or your community. So, and I know I experienced that. I mean, you know, I don't walk around like carrying a grudge because of it, but I am very aware of the fact that. As a black woman from, you know, a working class family, um, there are things that separate my life from maybe black women of privilege or black women from a more uh, higher income bracket, you know, like when I was a young girl, a teenager. And... Um, at the high school I attended, we caught the bus everywhere. 
You know, we would have to stand on bus stops unless you had a car. And I didn't get a car until I think my junior year of high school. But the rest of us were standing on bus stops. And some of those communities where we were or may have found ourselves had like other people who stood on bus stops or who stood on corners, if you know what I mean, other women who stood on corners. And sometimes it would put us in a situation where a car would pull up and ask if we wanted a ride. And I remember that happening to me once when I was waiting for a bus to go downtown to shop. It was, I had gotten off my, I had a part-time job after school and I worked from three to six and I was going to go downtown and return some clothing I had purchased. And then, um, because downtown stayed open late, I think on Wednesday or something. There was a day when it was still open till 9. And so, um, yeah, I remember that. And I remember, you know, stepping back and telling this man, no, I'm waiting on the bus, go away from me. But um, on the panel they these women brought up issues like that that women of color in the community in New Orleans was the well Tulane hosted the panel so Tulane University is in New Orleans and but communities around the world were represented around the states Florida New York I think San Francisco was represented um, or LA was represented and one of the ladies told, you know, the story about she had a Latina client who was standing on the bus waiting for the bus. And a man drove up and asked her if she needed a ride. And she said no. And he asked her what was she going. And she said the VA hospital. And he said, oh, you're a vet. I'm a vet too. Come on and get in. So she got in which you all just don't get in, just don't get in. And he turned out to be an undercover cop, and he arrested her for, in New Orleans, there's something called crimes against nature um, that I don't quite understand, but I think it has something to do with two sex acts that are classified as um, high risks or something of that nature. I, I don't know. It was weird. It was eye-opening. So why am I sharing this with you all? Because, you know, if you are conscious, well, I'm just now really becoming a lot more aware of this Agenda 21. Um, Agenda 21 policies, pretty much, you all, that are being implemented at the local levels that affect every friggin strata of government social legal health the food nutrition it uh, local government with your water with ordinances in your communities with law enforcement there are so just every strata of society is taking on these new policies or they are strengthening the regulations um, that support these policies. And it's it aligns with the thought that American citizens are being seen as the enemy and that in the near future, if, if you extend out to 20 years, 25 years or so, that American citizens are going to be all pretty much under, they're going to be criminalized and living under conditions that criminals live under. If we don't stand up and demand that our rights be preserved. So I found the panel interesting in that regard, as a black woman, I found it interesting because, you know, um, my experience as a black young teenager living in the area that I lived in. So we moved from North St. Louis to a very uh, trendy 
neighborhood that was but it was at that time going through a uh, redevelopment so it wasn't as it isn't like it is today at that time it was becoming trendy and we saw the rebirth the renaissance of that area and um, happening all around us it was just beautiful just a beautiful and it was a very safe neighborhood or street you know uh, cluster of streets many of them private streets gated streets um, but if you went beyond that border just up to the major thoroughfare north of that cluster of streets is when you would get into the be careful which bus stop you stood on and I worked at a um, little health clinic that was like in the heart of you know I mean it, it was there to serve people serve their health needs and so it was in the heart of the action and like right across the street if you went to stand on a bus stop you would there you know you would be mistaken as a woman of the night or something you know um so yeah it's so important for us I I don't know I don't know where I'm going with this video but I just wanted to talk about what I saw on the panel and I'm going to put a link below so you all can check it out. Now it is an hour and 30 minutes so if you don't have time, well it's an hour and 37 minutes I think. So if you don't have the time to sit and watch, then multitask and listen to the women. Listen to the women. And, and um, I like the point too that the panelists made about us understanding people from all walks like black women from poverty understanding black women who are not from pro poverty and black women um, white people or people of privilege understanding black women from whichever strata we're from because I, you know, as a black woman, even today, I sense in my daily interactions, you know, I'm aware of, um, I don't know, you just become aware of stuff. You do. You do. And you, you just learn to, um, you just become very aware that the law could is is a card that could be played as a threat against you when you're black no matter what privilege or strata you're from because you're black and that means that in some people's eyes it means that you are a criminal you're from a criminal element. If it's not you, if you're not a criminal, then your family is a criminal, or you're from in your history. They can go back and find something that will put you, set you against on the opposite side of the law. So, but isn't that what everybody? I mean, look, during the prohibition, you had people right in your own cities who was doing stuff okay so you go back far enough everybody has some something in their background that sets them on the opposite side of the law so I am not advocating to be on the opposite side of the law I am just simply stating in this weird video that that panel discussion is an eye-opener and you should go watch it and then become very aware I think I mean for me I am I have been encouraged to just pay close attention to the different organizations that the local communities are a part of there's one called Ilia I think it's I L E I Ili Ilia or something I forget but it's it's um, one of these agenda 21 um, private public partnership type of deals or it's a set of um, beliefs and policies that guide government 
local governments in their decisions, especially when it comes to um, how they manage their communities and how they govern their communities um, and policies that they begin to write and implement um, regarding housing, regarding water usage, land usage, um, and things like that. Yeah. So if you don't really, if you're not fully aware of this Agenda 21 and how it is a set of beliefs that is used to guide public policy away from protecting the rights of citizens to criminalizing citizens and a way of uh, revamping government to remove government from the, to shift the role of government um, away from serving the people to managing the people. Um, yeah. So check it out. I mean, some people think it's a conspiracy theory. I think it's beyond that. Now, I really believe that um, a lot of um, Enough people have acknowledged that the UN's Agenda 21, I mean, the document, you can find the document, okay? It, it, it's a known document. And I think enough people are, have acknowledged the fact that it is for real uh, a negative agenda. It's not, it's not um, too much of a conspiracy theory anymore. But... It's kind of odd to talk about stuff like this. It's really odd to talk about stuff like this. Yeah, because I've been blessed. I mean, I, I am very grateful for the opportunities that have come my way. And no matter what, no matter, you know, no matter what um, someone may try to pit, pigeonhole you or classify you as or you know, um, diminish your humanity. I, I just experienced what I call the God uh, favor. I just have, I have experienced a lot of um, favor, which I am so grateful for. But really, I, I, I really shouldn't have to be grateful for the favor because as an American citizen, which we are, you know, that's your right. That is your right to be treated respectfully. So, so yeah. It's a thin line, you all. It truly, there truly is a thin line. And one, one point that was made on the panel that really resonated with me, one of the, well, a few of the panelists pointed out that there are so many people and agencies and individuals, I mean, who feel like it is their right to police black women, who feel that they can judge the things we do, the way we spend our money, you know, where we choose to live, where we choose, to, how we choose to dress, our hair, you know, our attractiveness, um, so many, we're so harshly judged as black women. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, and look, I don't want you all to take this video as, oh, she's angry, because that's a cop-out response where people will say, oh, she's angry about something. When, when black women speak on these issues, um, some people, in order just not to become awake to the fact they respond immediately with oh that's an angry woman and then the the flip side of that is some women are so conscious of these truths to where they may be shielded to just being human first and not black first and I used to be criticized because some a couple of times I have been called colorblind because 
I just interact with people. People are people. Well, that's changing for me. I am becoming more critical now that I'm getting older from my experiences. I am becoming more critical of um, the actions of others. Or I'm becoming more aware of the actions of, and more sensitive to not necessarily like folks saying something crazy to me. Because look, I could just give you the ignorant look or tune you out totally. But you become, you, you really do begin to learn um, different signal behaviors and things when you're around a lot of people. And when you have been around a lot of different types of groups of people and you begin to learn how they interact in different ways they signal one another and it's just life experience especially when you can get out of your community and interact with people from other spheres of life so so yeah you all check out the video um just what could i say about this phenomenon just become aware of your rights as a citizen. Be aware of how those rights are being tampered with right now. How different agendas are really designed to change your world right in front of you. And... It's now time for us Americans to be very informed and involved on the local levels. Did you know your sheriff has more has high levels of authority? Your the sheriff doesn't even have to answer to the president. Now, I don't understand how that is, but it's written in the bylaws or the regulations or the whatever it is, the, um, the oath of the sheriff, if you will. So I'll put some links below so you all can see that because it's important to know these things so that you, when you find yourself in a bind, you can know who to go to. I mean, that could be a good point that the sheriff doesn't have to listen to the president or doesn't have to take commands from the president. But if you have a corrupt sheriff, you're in a hot place. You're in a bad place. If you have an honorable, trustworthy sheriff, you're in a good place. So, I know, y'all, this is a wacky video. But I ain't mad. I ain't mad at all. I ain't mad. <laughs> all right, y'all, be blessed. Bye.